When trying to recreate parts that we have some visual information on, for example a picture of said part, we can work with that picture within SOLIDWORKS to create geometries that can become parts and part drawings to manufacture them. With the following three simple examples, we'll learn about the sketch picture tool, the auto trace function, combining features, filtering selections, and even offset and thicken surfaces. Let's say you have a part that is no longer being made, and of course this specific part is a silly example. We have here a little stand where you can place your phone or iPad, or even a switch if your switch's kickstand broke or you don't like its inclination angle. And of course, let's say you can't find the GrabCAD online to just 3D print one of these. But let's say that you do find some pictures online, usually product websites have side, front, or top views of the product. What we can do with a picture like this is import it into SOLIDWORKS as part of a sketch. With a new sketch in SOLIDWORKS, and let's say we use the right plane for this, we can go into Tools, Sketch Tools, and select the Sketch Picture option. Here, we select the picture we want to import, and if the resolution is too high, SOLIDWORKS will ask us if we want a low-res version of it. In most cases, this will do. We zoom out, and notice that the image is upside down. So we set the rotation angle to 180 if that's the case, and also notice that the image is considered to be 2 meters wide. The blue dashed line is the scaling tool, which we will use to resize this picture into a more realistic dimension. For example, let's say we know that the device we're going to place on the stand is 20 millimeters in thickness. We would move the scaling line to the dimension where the device would go, technically the dimension we know, and resize it by dragging the other end. As soon as we let go of that endpoint, we're allowed to tell SOLIDWORKS what the real dimension for this feature is, in this case, the 20 millimeters. As soon as we hit enter, the image will be resized proportionally, meaning that all the dimensions should be reasonably correct. We bring the image closer to the origin, although that's not essential here, and notice that the image is part of that plane, and that we can still work on our 3D space. With this as the background of the sketch, we can create our actual sketch. In this case, we want to trace the outline of the side view, which we can do with lines and splines, and even with offset entities and some arcs. With the sketch done, we can use it to extrude it and make it as wide as we want, let's say 120 millimeters. Of course, if we want to be more precise, we could also use a second perpendicular plane with a picture in it. If we create a new sketch, select the front plane, go to Tools, Sketch Tools, and Sketch Picture, we can select the orthogonal front view. In this case, we will resize this picture by tweaking its dimensions on the left pane and moving it and scaling it until the height looks right with respect to the other picture. We click OK, we measure its thickness here, and with that info, we go back to the first sketch to create the extrusion. We paste that dimension here, and to finalize it a bit, we can probably give it a fillet, just enough to round the edges. And done! We go to our 3D printer and print the part that we could no longer buy. Now, sometimes the tracing part needs to be more accurate, and we actually have a good picture of what we want to recreate. Let's say we now want to make a keychain with the Superman logo on it. If we can find a picture online of a Superman logo and a good contrast, for example a black and white one, we can use the Auto Trace feature in SOLIDWORKS to make it. We'll need to activate the Auto Trace add-in first, so let's do that now. We go to Tools, then Add-ins, and check the Auto Trace option and hit OK. We go into Sketch, select the front plane, then Tools, Sketch Tools, and Sketch Picture, and select the Superman logo. We could resize it, saying for example that the top line is 1 inch or something, but let's not worry about that for now. If we now click on the right arrow, we'll be given the option to trace the image. We can select the eyedropper tool, select the white section within the logo, and click on Begin Trace. If there are some lines that are a bit off, we can play with the adjustments until it looks decent. We don't want any obvious irregularities here. After we hit Apply, we exit the sketch, go to Extrude, and give it whatever thickness we want, and we're done. Now to finish off this lecture, we'll learn about combining features. Let's say we have a switch controller that we want to 3D print a simple case for. Maybe we're flying with it in a bag and we don't want it to get squished. We'll begin with the same process we've been doing so far. We use Sketch Picture to bring in the top view to the top plane and rotate the image if needed. Let's say we measure the width of the black base and get 1.5 inches. 
So we set the blue line to be located there in B1.5 and we bring its center roughly to the origin. We trace the outline of one side of the controller using lines and splines, making sure that we leave just a tiny gap between them so that the controller actually fits in our 3D printed case. Draw a center line down the middle and use the mirror entities command. After exiting the sketch, we'll do this exact same process for the front view. We create a sketch on the front plane, we bring in the picture, we deselect the scale tool and resize the picture to make it match with our top view, and once again, using the mirror entities option to make it quicker, sketch the outline of the controller's front view, and it doesn't need to fit it perfectly. And finally, repeat the entire process with the right plane view. Sketch, picture, rotate, resize, recenter, outline the right side view, and exit sketch. Once we have these three sketches, we will extrude them so that all of them intersect, meaning we make the extrusions long enough so that each one of the extrusions protrudes out of the other two. But notice that we don't want to merge the features with the existing ones. So before clicking OK after every extruded boss, we uncheck the Merge Result checkbox. Now this is the interesting part. We can go into Insert, then Features, and then Combine. Now we don't want to add them together to create a new feature or subtract them from the main body. We want to keep what's common between them, so we select all three and we click OK. With this, we now have a very rough 3D replica of our controller. So if we can just give this a thickness and make it hollow, we could 3D print two parts and make it into a case. We will learn more about SolidWorks Mold tool, but for this lecture, we'll only offset all of the outer surfaces to create a new surface and give that offset surface a thickness. We first hit F5 to bring in the filter selection tools and we select the faces option so that the only thing we can select are the outer faces of this geometry. We hit Ctrl A to select them all and we go into insert, then surfaces, then offset. We give it whatever distance we want, let's say 0.12 inches, and we hit OK. And now, since that offset surface is just that, a surface, we can give it a thickness to make it an actual case. We go into Insert, then under Boss Base, and select the Thicken option. In this case, we want a thickness for that case that we're gonna 3D print. For example, one tenth of an inch, and in the inward direction. And we're done! We can hide the core, which is our first solid body, and use our section view option to see that we have a shell that can protect our device. Again, we'll learn more about molds and actually creating two halves for this shell later, but for now, you get the main idea. And most importantly, you learned about combining features, offsetting faces, and thickening surfaces. The links to the other lectures of the SolidWorks course, as well as the playlists to the other engineering courses, are down in the description below so don't forget to check those out. Thanks for watching.